Hey guys, it's Jessie at Plaid, and welcome to our newest series in the Let's Paint program, Modern Paint by Number, where we take your favorite classic paint by number and we put a little bit of a twist on it so you end up with your own unique painting. So I'm gonna let you guys know what supplies we need to start today. So the first thing I have here is my 12 by 12 wood canvas, and this is one of our products. This is one of my favorite things to paint on. I've got my palette paper here, my paper towels, I've got a water basin to clean my brushes, and then I'm also gonna be using our 10 piece variety set today. I've only got three of those brushes here. I've got the 3 4 inch flat brush, the number 12 flat, and the number 10 flat. And again, this is from our 10 piece variety set. But any brushes that are similar to these um, shapes and sizes will work just fine. I've also got a palette knife here, just a long straight palette knife. You can get this at any art or craft store. I've got a ballpoint pen. And then I've also got some stencil tape um, and our patterns, which I'll get to in just a second. I'll explain those. And as always, we'll be using our folk art acrylic paints. So we have wicker white, licorice, navy blue, aqua, lime green, daffodil yellow, and then last but not least, you've got bright pink. So today, we're going to be painting this cityscape design. So you can go ahead um, and on platonline.com under this project description, you can download this um, PDF file, and this is your template for the paint by number. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna print out, it's gonna be five pages. So we'll have the first four pages will be um, the pieces for the template, and then our last page is going to be our color mixing reference guide. And this is where I'm gonna show you what colors you'll be using for the paint by number itself before we paint on top of it. So to get your template onto your canvas, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. So I've got my template here that I've already cut out. You can see it's just each of the pages and then it shows you at the top how to tile it together, it's super easy. So I'm gonna lay it out, it'll fit perfectly on a 12 by 12 canvas. And it shows you which quadrant is which in the top corner so you can't mess it up. So like I said, it'll fit perfectly on a 12 by 12 canvas. If you've got a bigger canvas or a smaller canvas, you can probably just scale it differently on your printer to make it the size that you need. And I've got a little bit of just um, stencil tape here. You can use painter's tape or even scotch tape for this part. We're just gonna stick it together so that it doesn't move around while we're transferring. So again, I'm just using the tape to just tack it in place. It doesn't need to be perfect. We just wanna make sure that it doesn't slip and slide when we start to transfer. You wanna make sure you don't cover up any of the numbers or the lines, but you can tape them anywhere. Okay, so now I've got my complete template all taped together so it doesn't move around. I'm gonna set that aside real quick. And then I'm gonna grab my piece of transfer paper. So this is a folk art product, um, and I love using transfer paper. I use it all the time for my paintings. So if I wanna make some sort of sketch or drawing, or if I wanna transfer a template, this is the perfect thing to use. One side is smooth, and then one side is kind of rough and has a chalky consistency. And so you wanna put the chalky side down. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tack that into place too so it doesn't move around. I'm just gonna put a couple pieces at the top of the page. And you can see here too on the folk art transfer paper, it says this side up, so it makes it even easier. If you're a little bit confused as to which side goes down, um, it kind of just tells you right there for you. There's a couple pieces. I'm gonna, only gonna put it on top so that I can pull it up and check and make sure I have the lines transferred. So I'm just gonna put a couple pieces up there. And then I'm gonna take my template and put it right on top. You don't need to reverse it or flip it or anything like that. You just want it perfectly face up and we're gonna tack that into place too, just right on top of the transfer paper. Okay, so now that I have my template in place, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my ballpoint pen and I'm going to use it to draw over each of the lines. So if you don't have a ballpoint pen in front of you, you can totally just use the end of your brush 
because all you need is the pressure. You just need pressure, um, a small amount of pressure put over the lines, and that is what transfers that chalky consistency onto your canvas. I like to use a ballpoint pen just to make it a little bit easier because then I can kind of see which lines I've drawn over by where the ink is. So it's totally up to you. You can just use um, the end of your paintbrush and kind of check as you go, or you can use a ballpoint pen and you can see which lines you've transferred. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna carefully trace over every line. And so for this painting, for our cityscape, there's a lot of um, straight parallel lines and right angles. So you can feel free if you want to lay a ruler on top and follow that to trace your lines. If you feel like you want it to be super perfect, but you definitely don't have to. You can see I'm just doing my best to carefully follow these lines, but it's totally up to you. That's a little trick if you want it to be extra perfect. And as you're drawing your lines, you wanna make sure that you don't forget to put in the numbers, of course, so you can see where they are. You can always go back and use this as a reference if you forget to put the numbers, so don't stress about it too much, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put the numbers as I go ahead and transfer. And you don't need to put too much pressure. I'm putting a good bit of pressure on my pen just to um, ensure that I transfer those lines, but you don't need to press down super hard or anything. Just about a medium pressure. If when you're transferring this pattern, you're not using a ballpoint pen and you've decided to just use the end of your paintbrush instead, um, and you aren't sure if you transfer or uh, traced over a line or not, just go ahead and trace it twice because it's better to have traced it twice than not at all. It's going to be really hard once you pick up your whole template um, to try to line it back up and get that line back in. You'll most likely have to end up drawing it by hand. So like I said, it's better just to go ahead and do it twice than not having done it at all. It just make life a little easier later on. So again, I don't want to forget to transfer all my numbers. Let's see, it looks like I have all of my lines transferred and I've got all my numbers transferred. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull my template off and my tracing paper. And I've got my paint by numbers all set to be painted. So once you have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab our color reference guide. So for this painting, we've got six colors. So I'm gonna let you know um, which colors you're gonna be needing for each number. This is a little simple. We're not gonna be doing a ton of mixing for this one, just a little bit later on. Um, so the first color we're gonna be using is navy blue. And it's just gonna be pure navy blue right out of the bottle. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on my palette. I'm gonna wet my brush off. I'm gonna make sure most of the water is off. I don't want a super wet brush. I just want it to be nice and soft. And I'm just gonna paint some navy blue into the number one, and that way I can refer back later, and it'll be much simpler to know which color is which. And the reason that we use this um, color guide is because for some of the colors, we do end up mixing them, and they're not straight out of the bottle. And so this just makes it a lot easier for you when you're going back and painting in each color um, instead of listing the colors, we have it um, we have it this way so you can see which ones are mixed too. So for the second color, for number two, we're gonna be doing aqua, again, straight out of the bottle. So I'm just gonna put that in my number two spot so I can remember which color that is. For number three, it is going to be lime green. Just straight out of the bottle again. And you can fill on the whole um, circle if you want, but I'm just putting a little bit just so I know which color I need. For four, it's going to be daffodil yellow. Just pure daffodil yellow. For our number five color, we're gonna grab bright pink. A 
love that bright pink color. It's one of my favorites. And then for our sixth color, this one we are going to mix. And this is the reason that we use this mixing guide. Um, because some of the colors have, or I'm sorry, some of the paintings for a uh, modern paint by number, we have more colors that are mixed than others. So this last one we're going to mix. So we're going to mix navy blue, aqua, and white. So I'm going to put a little bit of wicker white on my palette to get sort of a nice oceany blue. So I'm going to grab a little bit of navy, that one part. We're going to start with one part navy, one part aqua, and one part white. And I don't need much right now. Let's see, how, let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. I want it to be a little more different than the aqua. So I'm going to put some more navy blue and a little bit more white to lighten it a little. This is going to be the part on the bottom of our paint by number that is the ocean area of our cityscape where the water is reflecting. So that color looks good to me. So I'm gonna make sure it's nice and mixed. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint it in my number six spot so I know that that's the color that it needs to look like in case I need to go back and mix that color again. So once you have your color mixing guide prepared, you can put it aside and we're gonna start painting our paint by number. Okay, so once you finish the paint by number portion of your painting, you can go ahead and put this color mixing reference guide aside. And we're gonna start adding the details on top. And this is the part that's gonna make your painting really unique because it's gonna be painted by hand by you. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my number 10 flat, which is a medium sized flat brush. And we're gonna do a little bit of mixing. So I'm gonna pick up some of my daffodil yellow. If you don't have any more on your palette, go ahead and add some more and some of my bright pink. And we'll start with about a one-to-one about a -one ratio. I need a little more pink for that. We'll go from there. What we're looking for here is a little bit of a tangerine color. So I'm gonna add some more pink to make it a little darker. We want a bright tangerine, because we're gonna add some shadows to our buildings, just to give it some more detail before we go in with the palette knife work. So that's good. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I like that color. And whenever I mix paint on my palette, um, I never go ahead and start painting right on my canvas because there's way too much paint on my brush. So you wanna make sure you wipe off the excess and maybe even rinse it off a little bit before you start painting because the less paint you have on your brush, the more control you have over how it um, goes onto your canvas. If you're completely saturated in paint, you won't have as much control. Okay, so I've got my nice tangerine color. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on the tip of my brush, just a little there, you can see, not too much. And we're gonna start right here, a little bit above where this building, this green building is, and we're gonna draw a diagonal line going up it. And this is gonna act as sort of a little bit of a shadow on our yellow building. So I'm just using the edge of my brush, you can see, just painting in this line, and that's gonna be the edge of our shadow, and we're gonna paint beneath it. And don't worry if your line is not perfect, this is sort of a loose painting. And we're gonna be adding lots of very loose details with our palette knife on top of it. So if you have a little bit um, of a, what you feel like is a mistake there, if it's not absolutely perfect, don't stress because you're really not gonna see it. We're gonna be adding so much detail on top. So I'm gonna fill in the bottom half of this building. I need to mix a little bit more. I think I undermixed it. So we'll do another little bit. We've got yellow and pink. I'm just gonna go up carefully to the edge. Again, if, if it goes over a little bit, don't stress. 
because I know it, it seems like you want all of your lines to be perfectly even because they're such straight lines and you've got so many right angles. But once we add all the details on top, it's going to make this painting much looser and you won't see um, any sort of inconsistencies in those lines. I'm just going to be as careful as I can, but definitely it's not going to be perfect. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sort of keep our diagonal lines all going this way, and they're sort of going to be staggered to create some more um, dimension on these buildings. So the same color, I'm going to do another little diagonal line here, and I'm going to try to go at the same angle, but it's going to be a little bit lower, and I'm going to paint in the bottom on this building. So you can see it's the same angle as this one, or about the same angle. It doesn't need to be perfect but I did make it a little lower on the building because I'm sort of imagining the shadows going up this way. If you want to use a smaller brush for this part too, if you feel like you need a, a little bit of a smaller brush for this detail, feel free to switch to a smaller brush. But I still have my number 12 flat. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean my brush off because we're finished with that color for now. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my palette knife. Because now for these buildings, we're going to use that same color that we mixed, that pretty tangerine color, and we're going to add some um, what are sort of intended to be window looking um, details to the top parts, to the yellow parts of that of those buildings. So I'm going to pick up some of that paint right on my palette knife. You can see I'm just sort of dragging it through. You can hopefully see how much paint I have on there. I have very little paint on my palette knife and it's sort of concentrated more towards the top half of the knife. So it's just on one edge, you can see here. And we're gonna take our palette knife and we're gonna just drag it across the building. And we're gonna do sort of stripes going down to sort of add to that geometric look and to make it look like there's some window details, some loose window details on our building. And if you need to mix some more of that tangerine color, go ahead and do that. I'm just going left to right and just sort of dragging my palette knife, just dragging the edge of it along that yellow building. And we can go straight down into the orange part, because of course you won't see it over that. And again, if you need to mix some more, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna mix it right with my palette knife. Some pink and some yellow. excess. Again, I just got it on the top half right on the edge and we're just loosely dragging it. And then I'm going to do a couple of vertical lines up top too, just to add some more details to this big skyscraper. And again, I'm just dragging the edge so loosely. I'm going to do the same thing for this one over here. And if you get, you can see I got maybe a little bit of orange on the building next to it. That doesn't really bother me. It's going to be such a loose painting. I'm okay with that. All right, so that's it for our yellow building for now. Let's go ahead and rinse that off and get most of that color off my palette knife. And grab a fresh paper towel. Okay, so we're going to keep sort of doing a similar technique and we're going to add some dimension to our um, green buildings. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up my number 12 flat brush again and I'm going to grab some lime green and some aqua. We're going to do about one to one ratio of that and mix them together. So you have this nice sort of emerald color almost. Again, I'm going to wipe off the excess. I'm going to do the same thing um, for our green building. So I'm going to start going up to the left. We're kind of going to separate these. This is kind of going to be two buildings. So we'll go ahead and we'll sort of separate that now just for the sake of the shapes. And I'm going to do my diagonal line about halfway up. And again, we're going to try to keep going at that same angle. And I'm going to paint the bottom half. Okay, 
buildings. We're gonna do the same thing for these buildings here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna separate these two again. We're gonna sort of pretend like these are two buildings and just sort of loosely, for my sake, separate those two. And we're gonna do another line going this way on this building here. And we'll paint the bottom half. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more of this color. Again, it was one part lime green and one part aqua, because we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do those window details again for our green buildings. I'm gonna pick up my palette knife again, do the same thing we did, just dipping just the edge, the top half, in this green color and dragging it from left to right to create these horizontal lines that are going to suggest windows on our skyscrapers. You can sort of do as many or as few of these as you want. If you want tons of details, you can add a bunch of lines. If you just want a few here and there, you can just do a few here and there. It's totally up to you. That's a great part about this version of Paint by Numbers is that you can make it detailed and you can make it your own. You can change it however you want for the top, for the second half of the painting when we're adding all of these details on top. I'm going to add some details to that one too. We didn't add the shadow, but we are going to add the windows. You can add some more detail to this one too if you'd like. I'm going to mix a little bit more of this green color. Add a few windows there too. Just using the very tip of my palette knife to get into that small area. I'm just gonna add a few. All right, so I'm gonna clean my palette knife off. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint in the reflections down at the bottom. So here, I'll show you how we're gonna do that. We are going to um, take each, the color of each of these buildings and we're going to paint them softly into the water to look as though the buildings are being reflected into the water. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my number 12 flat again. It's kind of wet, so I'm gonna make sure it's nice and clean and dry. And to make sure it's extra dry, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press it between some paper towels to make sure I get all of that moisture out because I can feel that it's really wet. Okay, so we'll, we'll start going from left to right. So we'll start with our yellow building here. I'm going to mix, um, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of pink in because I want it to be yellow because most of our building that's gonna be reflected is yellow, but it does have some orange detail. So we don't want it to be completely yellow just mostly yellow, a little bit lighter than we did the other details, I guess. And to do this, we're gonna take our brush and I'm holding it completely upright. I'm holding it vertical on my canvas and I'm going to drag it from left to right, sort of in a zigzag pattern. And so we're gonna do it really softly and really loosely to get a sort of a reflection into the water. And we're gonna do it about the length or about the height, I guess, of our building, maybe a little bit less. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna start at the base and I'm gonna do a zigzag down. I'm gonna leave lots of blue, a really loose one in the water because you wanna be able to see the water through it, of course. It wouldn't be totally yellow. And we'll stop about there because that's a, a little bit shorter than the building it itself is. And that's gonna be our reflection in the water. So now since we have the yellow 
and orange on our brush, we'll go ahead and do it for this building too. So we'll do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go a little bit shorter. So this one probably will go all the way down off our canvas because that's a very tall building. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go in the um, same width as the building, just a loose zigzag. I'm holding my brush completely vertical on my canvas. I'm gonna go all the way down, just super loose, almost sort of dry brushy at some points. I don't have a ton of paint on my brush. Just really loosely sort of implying that reflection on the surface of the water. And make, make sure you wanna um, stay completely vertical too. You don't want it to get slanted because it would be perfectly upright just like the buildings if it was a real reflection. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush off. And we're gonna continue this technique for the other colors of buildings. So I'm gonna put some more green on my palette. I need some more of the lime green. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of the lime green, or I guess a lot of it actually, and I'm gonna put a little bit of the aqua in it. Because just like we did for our yellow color, it's gonna be mostly green, but we wanna make it a little bit aqua because of those aqua details. Those would be reflected in the water too. So we're just gonna darken that green a tiny bit with the aqua. So again, don't forget to wipe the excess paint off your brush after you're done mixing. We're gonna do the same thing we did. We're gonna um, do each individual building. So we've kind of got these grouped into clusters here. So we're gonna do two reflections for each of them. So again, start at the base and going left to right, a really loose zigzag, about just a little bit shorter than the building itself. And you wanna keep it about the same width as the building. So this one's a little bit narrow. I'm gonna go down a little bit further because of course this one is taller than this one, so it's gonna be a little bit longer of a reflection. And the same thing for these guys here. Start right at the base, loosely going left and right, going a little bit shorter than that there. So go a little bit further. And then just a tiny little reflection here for this little green building. Okay, so then you go ahead and clean your brush off. So for these last buildings, our pink buildings that are left, you may be wondering why we didn't do um, any of the details for the windows on those, and that's because we're gonna go in with black at the end and add some super dark darks to our painting and we're gonna add the details with that black later. But we're still, of course, gonna go ahead and do the um, reflections now. Put a little bit more bright pink on my palette. And these will just be pure bright pink reflections. And the same thing we've been doing. Start at the base and go left to right. And if you want to pay attention to the shape of this um, building, you can go left to right and then go a little bit higher up on this side to reflect that the building does the same. And then we'll do the same over here for this building. Go a little ways down, about the same height as that area there. And then you can even go a little bit higher on this side to reflect that that building goes up higher on the right side. And this one kind of goes right off the canvas. Okay, so now that we've got our reflections in the water, we can start adding our black details, which is a really fun part. So clean my brush off. And I'm gonna add some um, licorice to your palette. If you've got pure black, that works too. Any black acrylic will work for this part. And I'm going to grab my palette knife. And we're gonna do, um, we're gonna go back over and add even more window details to all of our buildings. So we're gonna do the same technique we did for um, each, for our green and yellow buildings. But we're gonna do it right over it with black. And that's just gonna add, like I said, a little bit more detail. So again, I've got just a tiny bit of black paint and it's concentrated toward the top half of my palette knife. And I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just drag it 
across to add some black window details. And you can do as much of this or as little of this as you'd like. You can totally make the painting your own. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. We're going to go right over our shadow. And again, we're going to continue this for each of our paintings. I mean, for each of our buildings. We're going to continue painting it for each of our buildings. And again, you can see I have hardly any paint. Don't forget, you don't want too much paint on your palette knife because that's when it can kind of start getting messy a very little bit of paint and you can see where it's going and then you can add more paint as you get more comfortable with this technique. But just start, start small for sure. What I love about this new program, Modern Paint by Number, is that even though we all use the same template and we're all using the same colors and we're following the same tutorial, nobody's paintings will turn out the same. It will all have your own personal spin on it because you painted it yourself. I think that's really fun because as much as I love the classic paint by numbers, they're so relaxing and they're so soothing, you can kind of turn your mind off. Yours will always look like everyone else's because they're all the exact same. So for this program, everybody's will still be unique, which I think is so fun. Again, we're just trying to keep it as level as we can. All these horizontal lines pulling from left to right. And we're going on each of our buildings. And then our last pink building over here on the right, make sure we get some details on him too. And don't forget the little narrow part all the way on the end. Okay. So we're going to continue, once you've got all of your sort of window details added to your buildings, we're going to continue adding this dark black and create some shadows on our buildings to sort of separate them and make them really come to life and really pop. 
So I'm gonna put a little bit more paint on my palette knife. Instead of putting it just on the end, I sort of have it on the tip too, but it's still concentrated in the top half of my palette knife. We don't want paint on the whole thing. We don't want it all over. We just want paint on the top half. So I just sort of dunk my, my palette knife in the paint. And we're gonna do sort of a similar technique. We're gonna drag our palette knife um, and we're gonna concentrate all the paint in the bottom right of each of our buildings. So just like we painted in these shadows earlier with the color, we're gonna concentrate around that same area to create shadow in the bottom right of each building. So I'll show you how we do that. You just wanna sort of drag your palette knife across the surface. I'm gonna tilt my painting a little bit to make it more comfortable for me. I always recommend that you do that. If you feel like it's more comfortable for you to paint in a different orientation, move your canvas however you need to. So I've got my paint on my palette knife. I'm gonna start in the right-hand side. I'm gonna go right on the edge of my building and I'm gonna set it down and drag. And I'm gonna concentrate sort of towards the bottom of my building, like I said. Set it down and drag. And you don't want full coverage because of course that will just cover up all the beautiful co color. You just want a little bit. So we're just gonna do um, this technique on the bottom right of all of our buildings. So start on the bottom right and drag. It's okay if you run out of paint halfway through. That's sort of the beauty of painting with a palette knife. Okay, do a little bit more at the bottom. Bottom right on the corner and drag. And the taller buildings, you can go up a little ways too. You can continue the black a little bit higher up. And this is just adding some more um, depth and darkness to our painting, just a little bit deeper of a shadow. You can see I'm just really using the edge and I'm dragging the paint across. You can sort of hear how it's dragging because it's sort I don't have it perfectly flat, I have it sort of at an angle. And if you've never used a palette knife before, I kind of recommend you do some practice um, passes on your on your palette or on a piece of paper, whatever it is that you have near you, but um, it just might make it a little bit easier for you to get the feel of it. And I'm just focusing on the edge, the bottom right edge of each of my buildings and I'm dragging it to create that really loose, beautiful shadow makes our, our painting a little bit more dramatic. You can go up a little higher, like I said, for these taller buildings. And then last but not least, we'll add some of our black detail down here on our bottom right of our pink building. And then of course, if we have these deep dark shadows on our buildings, they would probably be reflected in the water as well. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mirror what we just did into the, um, into the reflections that we painted. So I'm gonna start on the same edge. I'm gonna continue that into the water and I'm gonna drag left. And don't forget, we wanna mirror it. So it's gonna be bigger at the top and smaller at the bottom now. So it's gonna be opposite of how we did the top buildings. Just like that. Again, I'm gonna start on the same edge as the building because that's where it would be in the reflection. And you're gonna drag it in sort of a mirrored shape of how your paint is on your canvas on the building. And so see your line there and drag left. And don't forget, this is supposed to be very loose. So if I feel like you're just making a mess, I bet it is much prettier than you think it is. It's, it's definitely a new way of painting for a lot of people. So don't stress about it. Just let your hand be really loose and sort of let the paint go where it wants to go. It's hard to have a lot of control over the palette knife which is sort of the fun of it. And start in the corner of each building and dragging left. Okay, so once you have added your details to your reflections, 
that is it for our cityscape for modern paint by numbers. So thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed our new take on the classic paint by numbers with our own little twist. Um, and keep an eye out for more modern paint by numbers. We'll be dropping them every Sunday on our YouTube channel. And we hope to see you next week. Bye.